So in this video, let's go over the second order integrated rate law. Remember the rate law, how the rate depends on the concentration is equal to the rate constant times the reactant squared. And so that two is the second order. That's why we say this is a second order rate law. The integrated rate law, of course, tells us how the concentrations change with time. And I've given a couple of videos already on the zero and first order rate law. When we plot the concentration of A versus time, usually you'll get this curve. Sometimes it's a straight line going down, and that means the reaction is zero order rate law, integrated rate law. When you get a curve, it's not zero order integrated rate law, it's going to be first or second order kinetics or first or second order reactions. So remember what we did here, if you remember that first order integrated rate law video, we take the natural log of A versus time, and sometimes this gives us a straight line. Sometimes the data here will straighten out and this gives us a straight line. But if the reaction is second order kinetics, the line starts to flatten out, but it's not exactly a straight line. And so this is not first order kinetics. For a second, uh, this is not second order kinetics. For a second order uh, reaction, if we plot one over A versus time, you see that we're taking the inverse of this problem right here. And so when we take that data and we take the inverse and plot versus time, you get that straight line with a positive slope. So if we take our y equals mx plus b, y is the y-axis, 1 over a, m is the slope, which is the rate constant, and it's a positive slope, so this number is positive, the rate constant. Remember, for zero and first order kinetics, those integrated rate laws, you had the negative sign in there because those straight lines were going down. This line is going up. X is the time, and B is the y-intercept, which is the initial concentration of A, or one over the initial concentration of A. So this right here is your second order integrated rate law. It allows us to find the concentration of the reactant at a particular time if we know the rate constant and the initial concentration of the reactant. Now be careful here, very common mistakes for chemistry students. Remember, as you're working this out, you're looking at one over the concentration, one over the initial concentration. So as you're plugging in your data and working this out, just remember in the end to take the inverse here and go find those concentrations. The half-life. Again, half-life is the time required for the initial concentration to be cut in half. For second order kinetics, the half-life is one over K times A naught. So let me show you how we get there. If we take our integrated rate law, We want to know when this species is A naught over 2. 
And so if we rewrite this equation, one over a naught over two. So remember, you've got that denominator inside a denominator. When that happens, this denominator goes up to the top. So let me rewrite that right here. This becomes two over a naught is equal to k times t, which is the half-life, plus one over a naught. So how do we solve for t? Let's subtract one over a naught from both sides. And I'm gonna to try to fit it in here. So this cancels. Two over a naught minus one over a naught. So of course, two minus one is just equal to one. is equal to kt. And of course, just divide both sides by k. And that gives us our half-life. The time it takes for the reaction to be cut in half is 1 over ka0, which is what the half-life is.